Hey everybody, Lonnie here. So we're continuing on creating our real-time dashboard using the OSI Soft PyWeb API in AngularJS. This part, I want to go ahead and dive into the architecture of the application. We haven't really talked about that yet. We've mostly been messing around with styling, CSS stuff, uh, bootstrap stuff, HTML stuff, getting our base application set up with all our scripts and everything brought in. Now we're going to start getting into some of the um, meat and potatoes of the application and what really is the engine that's going to drive this whole thing. So architecture here. I have this little slide that kind of describes what we're going to be doing. So over on the left here, I have the um, dashboard web application. And that is the part um, that's running within the browser, the client application. So this web app, it's also called a SPA, single page application. Um, there's a few different terms out of, uh, that are used to describe it. But essentially, it's kind of the new um, paradigm as as far as how applications are being deployed now. There's mobile applications that run on native phones and tablets and stuff like that. But then there's also this idea of a web application that you create it using, um, you create the application using JavaScript and HTML, and then it communicates back to a server and gets data to populate it. Um, the uh, typical example of an application, a web application um, that most people are familiar with is uh, Google Mail. That uh, runs completely in a browser. And you're seeing more and more of these all the time. Uh, over the, the last several years, there's really been an explosion of this. And so um, in the commercial world, it's used um, you know, for, for things like Gmail, but it also can be used in uh, within a company, within your organization, like if you, uh, if you have an a intranet and you want to de deploy um, dashboards to where everybody can access them through a browser. So there's a lot of advantages to using um, and creating these web applications. So within this web application, we're going to have um, three components really and in, in areas that we're going to be working with. And this is, this is pretty typical for an Angular application. And uh, once you've uh, kind of done it, it's, a, uh, it's, 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 it's something that makes a lot of sense, I guess, is the way that I think about it. It's pretty much the approach that I take for 99% of my applications now. We're going to have a view. The views are the part that uh, you can think about as far as what people are going to see in a browser. It's exactly how it sounds. It's going to be the view of the application. So um, in this case, we'll have a couple of different views because we're going to have two different dashboards. We're going to have a summary dashboard and the production dashboard. So we'll have two views. And really, I just created that second uh, production dashboard view just so that we can navigate between them. And it'll be a little bit more interesting and, and more real world like. Uh, behind every view um, is a controller, and this is the model view controller, the MVC um, type of, uh, of, of architecture that we're, we're using here. And a controller is the code, the code that's running behind the view. And this is really typical. You saw this back in the uh, Silverlight days. Um, you've seen it with MVC, with ASP.NET, and now you're seeing it with Angular. So um, this MVC uh, model view controller is really um, super, super common. Uh, the, the model part of it is where, what our data is, and that's going to be populated by this data service. And that data service's job is to go out to the server and get that data and bring it back, populate the model that the controller will provide uh, and, and adjust as needed and interact with the view. So, um, so that's what's happening on the um, in the web app client side. Now we're going to develop this um, this web API, and there's a little bit of might seem confusing at first because we're, we're we have a couple of uh, APIs here. One is the PyWeb API, which is by OSIsoft, and I'll be talking about what the PyWave API is and give you um, a, just like a real basic quick run through of that. But um, we're going to wrap that within our own um, API. And that's going to be using the ASP.NET Web API 2. And if you remember when I created that uh, the base application, we checked that box and that set up the that set up our application to be able to create this. So when we make calls from our client side, our web app, back to our server, we're actually going to make those calls through this um, ASP.NET Web API technology. That ASP.NET Web API technology is going to it's going to intercept that call and then it's going to turn 
turn that call into a um, PyWeb API call and go out and get the proper data. Now this gives us a lot of advantages around um, security and being able to do other things on the server before we actually send the data back to the client. For example, we need to make multiple calls um, using the PyWeb API to get the, to satisfy the request from the client, then we can do all that. We can take care of it all on the server side. We can get all those calls taken care of and we can bring everything together and then send it back. And so it simplifies uh, what happens on the client side. The other thing too, is if we need to go out to multiple data sources, maybe we need a SQL, we have a SQL data source and we have a, a NoSQL like a MongoDB or something like that. And we wanna go, um, get data, or maybe it's another API from another service, we can go ahead and do all that stuff too. So um, by wrapping this in, uh, this these two APIs within each other, it'll just it'll set us up to give us a lot more flexibility. It might seem a little complicated and a little strange and why we're not just calling the PyWave API directly from the client. Certainly we could do that, but I found in real life applications, you seldom will ever do that. It's very, very unusual. It'd be the simplest applications that are doing the simplest things. So anyway, we'll, we'll be doing that. And then of course we have our Pi system that we're gonna be pulling the data in and out of. And that's going to be, um, all, that's all set up through uh, AF. Okay, so that is the overall um, architecture. And what we're gonna do on the next one is we're gonna go ahead and get started building this out. And we'll dive right into Angular at that point. And that'll probably be the, you know, the, the, um, the main part. If there's a learning curve or a difficulty in this, this um, whole project, I think Angular will probably be the most challenging part of it. But hopefully we'll get through it and you'll see when, when, when it's all done that it really isn't that tough. So anyway, I'm Lonnie, I hope that uh, this series is helping you get um, to a point where you can develop your dashboards, um, your web-based real-time real dashboards. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye-bye.